Welcome to this Cheetah to You sociology topic video on social class and anti-school subcultures. Anti-school subcultures are one of the internal factors that limit the educational achievements of working class students. But what are education anti-school subcultures and how do they differ from other subcultures that we discuss on the topic of education? An anti-school subculture is a group that has developed its own norms and values that are in opposition to those of the school, usually as a reaction to the way in which members of the group have been treated within the school. There are other subcultures within education, ones based on gender and ethnicity, and there may be some overlap with these due to the intersectional nature of students' experience. For example, laddish subcultures are often formed by working class boys. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to focus specifically on social class and examine subcultural reactions based on gender and ethnicity in later videos. So why do working class students rebel? Well, one reason for the formation of anti-school subcultures has been discussed in our earlier video on setting, streaming and banding. The process of differentiation and polarisation that working class students undergo when they are put into lower sets leads to the development of an anti-school ethos. Bowler found that this is partly due to the rejection of those that join subcultures by the education system and the feeling of being in a psychological prison that placed into lower sets creates. This frustration in being denied any form of status in the education system can be linked to subcultural ideas of Albert Cohen, who suggested that working class subcultures form as a result of being denied legitimate opportunities to succeed. This status frustration leads to lower class students adopting an alternate status hierarchy and inverting the norms and values of society and deviating. While Cohen was writing primarily about deviance in wider society, this explanation can be applied to anti-school subcultures and plus point demonstrates an ability to link topic areas of the specification together such as education and crime or what is referred to as synoptic links. A further reason for the development of anti-school subcultures is the concept of symbolic violence. The education system in rejecting the habitus of the working class in preference of middle class tastes, attributes and attitudes commits symbolic violence against working class students, forcing students to try and achieve status from their peers through symbolic capital and by becoming a member of an anti-school subculture and deviating from the school's norms and values. Well, how do anti-school subcultures form? According to Lacey, they form due to working class students being marginalised in education through the process of differentiation and polarisation caused by setting and streaming. Those that have been placed into lower sets and streams feel rejected and opt to gain recognition through deviant behaviour. Conversely, those in higher sets react to the status they are given by conforming to the norms and values of the school and celebrate their status through pro-school subcultures which follow and promote the ethos of the school. These are more likely to be middle class students with those in the lower sets being more likely to be working class. Willis, in his seminal study, Learning to Labour, suggested that subcultures form due to working class students recognising the futility of education for working class males. His study of the lads found anti-school attitudes not because of rejection from the school, but instead because they approached ed education with a fatalistic attitude. Martin McIngail, in his research on macho lads, found that subcultural attitudes are developed as a reaction to the excessive discipline that they faced in education. Like, Willis, the, like Willis's lads, the macho lads did not act passively, but rather reacted to the way in which they were treated by the education system, demonstrating agency in their decisions to go against the school's norms and values. In these instances, anti-school subcultures can be seen as an act of resistance. The impacts of anti-school subcultures are that they inevitably lead to educational underachievement, but how? It can be argued that the case of the lads in Willis's research and the macho lads in Mac and Giles' research, that education was rejected as a legitimate means of achieving success and status, and that the lads in these studies opted to gain status through, pro pro through proving themselves as troublemakers, thus leading to higher status from their peers. This rejection of education could be said to reinforce the fatalistic attitudes found in working class subcultures, as found by Hyman and Sugarman in their respective research. Educational opportunities are blocked, and so there is a lack of optimism in anti-school subcultures about the future, and therefore the immediate gratification of status from peers is sought after instead. This leads to working class students being demotivated to complete work, and the anti-school behaviours demonstrated become more likely to lead to disciplinaries and exclusions from the education system, subsequently leading to educational failure. In evaluating the impact of anti-school subcultures, it's important to examine the role of other factors, particularly those in school. 
Anti-school subcultures are often formed as a reaction to other processes and so should be examined as part of a bigger picture within education. Labelling, negative teacher-pupil interactions and stereotyping are all important factors to consider in the formation of subcultural attitudes. Furthermore, it could be argued that just because a student demonstrates an anti-school attitude, it doesn't mean that they are anti-education. Fuller and Sewell both found that, in an that being anti-school did not necessarily mean that education was rejected as a means to success. Another factor to consider is the interplay between internal and external factors in the formation of anti-school subcultures. While nominally anti-school subcultures are seen as an internal factor, other factors such as material and cultural background can influence membership of an anti-school subculture. It's also argued that to be deterministic in that it suggests membership of anti-school subcultures leads to failure. Many students deviate but ultimately end up conforming to the norms and values of education in later years. Furthermore, evaluation can be developed through examining the impact of anti-school subcultures on further deviant activities, including membership of criminal subcultures in wider society. So that, that concludes this video on social class and anti-school subcultures. Thanks for watching.